All right, y'all, welcome back to Comet Arms channel. Okay, so today we're doing a little instructional video. Now, I did say I was going to try and get more into these instructional videos. So this is like the first real one for y'all. So as you guys can tell by the title and probably by the thumbnail, because I'm gonna try and find something cool to put in there, we're gonna be doing a little instructional video on how I set up my boonie cap. Now, this is more specifically tailored to like a, a recon or a recce sort of boonie cap and not necessarily a normal patrolling cap. Because honestly, if you just rock a normal boonie cap for normal patrols, I think you'll be fine. But this is just to add a little bit more camouflage if your job entails, you know, needing something like that, especially for a recon unit. So I have all the supplies right here. I'll give you guys a little bit of a, a, an overhead in a little bit, but I'll show you. This is the last one I made. So I've made a couple now. Um, I actually ended up losing my first one. Pretty upset about that one. So this is basically the, the finished product. And now it looks a little bit rough just because it's been used a lot and a lot of times it's been pulled out or you know sometimes it just gets gaps because sometimes things shift around. But yeah, you guys can also see on the inside. So you can see we have a, a netting on the inside just to make it a little more breathable so it's not as hot. Cause yeah, if you have the normal boonie caps and you leave all this material on top, it gets pretty brutal wearing it. It also sheds some of the weight, which you know does matter if you're doing longer movements and whatnot. You can see I have some VS-17, like some high-vis panels and some material on the inside. That's mainly for signaling. If I need to do like an emergency signal or something, if I'm linking up with someone, I can utilize that. And it also just allows me to implement it into my pace plan, which basically means like a, a signaling plan. So if you need backup signals, you have this as an option if you need to signal someone as opposed to carrying around an actual panel. So you can do this. Some people might not really want it, but it is an option. And I'll show you guys a little bit more about that and how you use it later on. And then, yeah, you can see I have some jute material. So that's kind of like this hairy material. We have a net. So that's basically what all the jute is attached to. We have this um, canvas material, this um, netting material you can sort of see on the top just so it does have some resistance so I'm not just like wearing a visor or something like that. And then I have this other burlap material just to provide a little bit more shadow and just break up the, the shape a little bit more as far as masking my face and whatnot. So yeah, that's basically it. Now it's probably gonna take a while to record this video, but I'll try and keep it as simple as possible and explain every step along the way as to why I do something or you know, maybe ways that you guys can improve it if you really want to. So yeah, we'll do a little showcase of all the materials you'll need so you guys can understand what you're working with. Okay, so we're sort of moved from left to right, sort of explaining everything. First, we have that netting. So again, this is what we attach the jute to. So you can see it's spaced about an inch apart just to make it a little bit easier to actually attach that jute. And I'll show you how you actually attach it to this netting. So that's basically it. You can spray paint it if you want, um, again, it's not recommended to do that too much just because it does give off a strong smell, but I can only find it in black, so I just decided to spray paint it. And once you rub it in the dirt a little bit more, it sort of, it's, tends to lose that spray paint smell a little bit. Now we have the jute, so you can get this in a bunch of different lengths or a bunch of different colors. So that's my jute right there, kind of in a ball, so that's gonna be a pain in the butt later on. Um, so yeah, that's the jute that we're gonna use to attach to the netting right there. This is just some extra netting material. Again, it's going to be based off of what actual environment and terrain you, you plan to be using this in. So if you have like some bigger leaves, you can use something like this. If you have a lot of like pine needles or like conifers, you can maybe use a little bit more jute. Uh, so it's all dependent on what material or what environment you're working in. We have some extra camouflage strips right here. So if you just wanna cover some gaps in certain areas, or just maybe cut this into strips. You could use that to also hang down from the netting. We have the, the VS-17 panel. So pretty much any high-vis material. I'm not sure what this is made out of. It feels like um, just like a nylon. So this is pretty good stuff. And you can see it's also very highly visible. You can use pink, you can use the orange. So pretty cool stuff there. Okay, so moving on to the thread, you can see this is some really good stuff. This is actually a part of our sniper kit. So really thick thread, really nice stuff. And then we also have these uh, these needles here. So some pretty big needles if you need to get through some thick equipment. And then you also have this, this U needle, which is super helpful as far as weaving in and out of the material quickly. So I highly recommend that. Of course, you need your boonie cap. 
You can use whatever material you want. This is just a, a multi-cam boonie cap because I already have one that uses the woodland marpat, so this material. So this is just for a slightly different, slightly lighter terrain. Um, so this is just a basic, I think this is like a true spec. Yeah, so just a standard boonie cap. Um, I would recommend nylon cotton blend just because it tends to last a little bit longer, especially when you start cutting into it and threading things. It just maintains its its shape and holds things in place a little bit better. And then we have a bunch of different netting materials. So this is like a burlap, so you can see here, pretty good stuff. That's also been used a lot, a lot, so it's kind of like, you know, aged. This is some of the newer stuff, pretty shiny stuff. This is just like a netting, kind of like a laundry bag. Um, wouldn't necessarily recommend this because it's kind of reflective. So if you want to spray paint it, maybe you can do that. If you just want to get it dirty, you could also do that. But then you also have, so if you go on like Amazon or something and just Google like Sniper Veil, you have a lot of different options for stuff like this. And this is a multi-cam one, so really cool. A little bit shiny, again, but I think if you start rubbing it in the ground, using it a little bit more, it'll get a lot better. So yeah, you can see the material and the camouflage there. So that's pretty cool. And then we have shoe goo. So this is some really, really good stuff. This basically just holds everything in place initially and then you can start actually threading things in. So I'll, again, I'll show you guys a little step-by-step, step, but this thing is awesome. And I know a lot of snipers swear by this when they're making their, their ghillie suits and whatnot. Just a knife that'll be used for a bunch of different reasons, mainly cutting up the, the boonie cap a little bit, and then also just some scissors. So that's pretty much everything that you'll need. Um, you don't necessarily need all of this, and again, it's just going to be based off of your terrain and what you're actually doing. So those are the materials that I'm going to be using today. Okay, so again, first step is going to be addressing this boonie cap. So what we want to do is get rid of this top material, get rid of some of this webbing because you don't really need it. It's just, again, ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain, as they say. So you want to trim as much weight as possible. This string thing here, you just, you don't need that, okay? If you see anyone using this string as like a chin strap, then they probably don't use boonie caps very often, but that's just from my personal experience. I don't know if you guys use them where you're from, but yeah, we generally don't use that sucker unless you you know, have the string and you do one of these like Aussie moves right there. Okay, so you wanna cut that off and then you wanna start cutting some of this material. So I just skip one, so cut one and then I'll skip, cut the next one and so on and so forth. Realistically, you can pretty much cut all them off if you're going to be adding the netting because you could just use the netting to put that natural vegetation in. But yeah, I just leave it in case I wanna put like some of the thicker, heavier vegetation. I also have some, some spots for that. Okay, and that's basically it right now. So you can see, again, I was skipping and then I left the back too. So that's how it looks right there. And that next, we're gonna be taking off pretty much this entire material. You, you can maybe leave a layer if you want, because it's got like double layer, but I'm just going to cut all that off because I'm going to be putting uh, a net there anyway, just to make it a lot more breathable. I mean, it's kind of funny that I'm using these uh, kid scissors for something like this, but it was the only thing that was easily accessible, so sue me. Okay, you want to do it above the stitching, because if you get below the stitching and mess up that stitching, it's not going to be a good day, because it's just going to degrade the long-term durability. And you wanna make sure that these have some pretty long-term durability and uh, you know capabilities, just so you can weather it a lot more, makes it more effective whenever it's nice and dirty. Especially when you use it in the environment you're operating in, it'll start to get all those natural colors built in. Multicam isn't so great on the Pacific Northwest, but I have that Marpat Woodland set up already, so. This is just for other things if I need it. All right, so there we go. You can see the top is completely cut out and then we just have this excess material. So if you want, you can use this for you know strips as well. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna put that to the side because I don't think I'm gonna use it. Okay, so next I'm going to be adding, I'll probably end up using this just because it's going to be relatively concealed. So maybe use that for the top cover like that. Yeah, so this seems slightly more uh, durable and i don't want a material that's really going to stretch too much at the top like this stretches a lot more than than this would so we'll just put this on top and we'll use this to actually have that uh you know that ventilation so i'll put it on top you don't really need to cut it 
very well. Um, as long as you cut enough space so you can actually sew it in, then you'll be good. So I'll just do this very generically. Just drape it over, go around, try and keep it in place so you're not messing up the cut. Definitely cuts a little bit more than you think you'll need though. Okay, so let's see, let's see if that's good. So again, just wanna drape it over again. We have a little bit excess, which is totally fine. So that's basically it. So we have about an inch around all the sides, maybe a little bit more. Again, totally fine. Um, so that's generally, that's looking pretty good right there. Okay, so now we don't want this to be on the outside because again, it might start covering these loops. So what we're gonna do is take this and then throw it on the inside. So all that material is, end up, is gonna end up being on the inside, pretty much like that. So while it's here, I mean, we can keep it here, but really what we wanna do is just apply some shoe goo to the inside rim, and then we can start setting the, the netting in place. So shoe goo is really good because it's nice and, and thick. So you can sort of see here, I definitely recommend some pretty decent ventilation because this stuff, just it just smells gnarly so yeah i try and keep some pretty good ventilation but again it's nice and thick so it'll actually hold the material in place before it cures and whatnot so we'll just get a few drops all around it so that's actually kind of old stuff there but that's fine space it apart again this is like pretty old shugu so it's extra thick and then just get those drops. You don't really need like huge drops because it holds really well. Okay, so we have that. You guys can see all the little drops of shoe goo there and whatnot. And you can really, you can spread that apart. It doesn't need to be like a, a blob because again, it's, it's thick and it'll hold it really nicely even if there's not a huge thick layer or blob. So we'll spread it out a little bit just so we get a little more surface area coverage. All right, and then we'll get our netting and just throw that sucker in. Keep trying to check both sides to make sure you have decent spacing so you're not running out of material on one side. So that's looking pretty good. Again, I don't know if you guys can really see it, but the shoe goo is pretty much going like over the netting just because of how, how thick it is. So yeah, we'll just hold that in place a little bit, make sure it looks relatively good, make sure that the netting is going to be pretty much where the top of the rest of the boonie is. And then we'll just set this in place there. Again, we're gonna fix up everything whenever we do the actual sewing. This is just to hold it in place. And if you need to add a little more shugu, go for it. Again, just try not to keep too much because this stuff does dry pretty glossy. But once you start using it, it will, you know, work itself and get, you know, covered with dirt and whatnot. But yeah, try not to use too much. It also does stink a lot, so <laughs> that's also not gonna be fun. All right, so we'll let this sit for a little bit. All right, so when you think that's held in place well enough, you can start getting your thread going. So yeah, you can see there's a top right there, so looking pretty decent. And I can tell just looking on the inside, pretty much most of the material is stuck there, so I can just start working my way around, start getting some of that netting sewn in. So let's start doing that. So just keep checking that you're pulling all the threads relatively evenly and make sure that you're not pulling it too taut because if you pull it too taut, it's gonna start you know, binding and constricting the top. So just get it tight enough to where all the threading is being pulled relatively uh, straight through. Okay, so yeah, here we have it. So yeah, you can see I got the thread going all the way around. Not the prettiest, but it's totally fine. Now, personal preference for me is whenever I do uh, like a the starting knots or wherever the thread first goes in and then the end knots i just put a little bit of shoe goo just to make sure it holds it in place a little bit better so yeah that's pretty much it that's our netting if you want you can you know trim away some of this excess netting on the inside um i mean for me i'll probably just leave it because i don't really care but yeah that's basically it that's i mean in general that's a good boonie hack or a little uh, diy if you're just gonna be rocking a boonie cap that makes it a lot more breathable and it does make a difference even if you don't have like a whole lot of hair like like i used to have it does make a whole lot of difference so yeah awesome stuff there okay so next what we're going to start working on is putting in the i mean you can either do the panel or you can go to the net uh, for me since there's not a whole lot going on i like to put in the panels so i'm going to be doing that next and then we'll be moving on to the net because if i do the net then it's just going to start getting in the way it's going to start grabbing onto my 
my thread a little bit more. So keep it nice and, and simple. So next I'll be using the panel. So you can do, I mean, you can really do like a strip all the way around. You can do like intermittent strips. For me, I think it's a little bit easier whenever I'm doing signaling, it's a little bit easier to see and whatnot. But that's basically what we're gonna be moving on to next. So I'm gonna start prepping that. So since this is double-sided, I'm actually just, I'm gonna use both colors. Cause I don't know, maybe you'll find some weird colorblind person like me that'll be able to see the pink a little bit easier than the orange. So we're gonna alternate it and do both colors. Okay, so we have our strips here. We're gonna put some shoe glue um, just to get them stuck on real quick. And then we'll sew them in place. Keep the shoe glue relatively thin on these because if you start, you know, trying to thread sh through a straight blob of shoe glue, it's gonna get pretty hard and it might jack up your needle if it's not very strong. And what I like to do also, if there is extra, extra material, just put that over it because when you start sewing it, it'll just hold this extra material in place. And if you have a little bit more hold, it's always better, again, just for that long-term durability. Yeah, so that's basically it right there. So nice to keep it on the brim because when you are wearing it, it's not going to be easily visible. And if you have it on the other side, if you're taking your hat off or something, it might be a little bit easier to see it from the other side. So I like to do this. You can just you know, push in your, uh, your netting and you'll be able to expose most of those panels. So yeah, that's just the way I've, I've chosen to do it. I think it works out pretty well. So there we go. We have those in there and now we're just going to get um, our threading and just, yeah, fix all that in place. Okay, so now we have all of that good. So you can see it just got some general threading in there and yeah, pretty much as secure as I need it to be. You can also add some more shoe glue. You can see I didn't really put so much at the top as far as the threading, but yeah, it's good enough for me. It's good enough for a government job, as they would say. So we have that in place. Next, I want to work on the bill. So of course, with camouflage, you wanna try and break up the, the shape or you know unnatural shapes as much as possible. And when you have like these straight lines, like you would see with the brim, you wanna try and break that up as much as possible. So you can see, with my old one, you can see I cut up the, uh, I cut it up just to make it a little bit more fuzzy, just break it up ever so slightly. So the way we're going to do that, I like to just get like, either you can get like a serrated knife or you know a sharp knife, or you can just get some scissors, just cut into the bill ever so slightly. So you have, I don't know, maybe half a centimeter into the bill. You don't wanna get past that, that first thread. So just do that, space it about, uh, I don't know, maybe a centimeter apart and just keep doing that all around the bill. So you pretty much start looking, it starts looking like that. I'm not sure if that's in focus or not, but yeah, we'll start doing that and we'll do it all the way around. And then I'll show you how to distress it slightly. Of course, while you're doing this, you can listen to a podcast or you know watch a video or something, just because this might get pretty monotonous and it doesn't take a whole lot of attention. Um, so when I was just doing the threading, I was actually just watching the new WandaVision, so if you guys haven't seen that show, I definitely recommend it if you have it available in your country. Really good show, not sponsored. <laughs> okay, we're finishing up here. So just do that all the way around, and then once you're done with that, basically how I distress it is I just take the knife or blade, whatever, and just draw it across it. You can see it starts, starts getting a little bit fuzzy. So just do that all the way around just so it gets nice and fuzzy, the threads start popping out. Again, we didn't go past that first seam, so it's not going to really affect the long-term durability so much. And there we go. So you can see now it breaks up the shape ever so slightly. And you know, I mean, you never know, you try and break it up as much as possible. Of course you have some other lines. These are gonna be covered up a little bit more. So the bill, this is going to be the most exposed. Uh, I like to do you know, this, uh, this canvas or this other netting material to try and apply that to over the top so it breaks up a little bit more. But this also does a good, good job if you're not going to cover the complete outer rim of it. So that's what we have so far. So again, this is just a general boonie setup right now. What we're going to be doing now is making it more camouflage, more recon specific as far as adding the netting. So that's what we're going to do next. We're gonna add the netting. And then once we do that, we can start applying the jute and then you know any other camo strips or any of this material. So yeah, we're gonna add the netting. So again, we're going to drape that sucker right over the top. So here's our boonie cap. Just gonna drape it over the top and just cut a general circle. You wanna go about to maybe where the brim is. 
Um, you can go a little bit lower. You can keep it to the end of the brim if you want, but I'm not going to be sewing through the brim itself. So I'm just going to extend it slightly um, around the brim itself. So I'll use the edge so I don't need to cut as much and then we'll just work on the other stuff. Okay, so there we go. That's pretty much it. Again, it's nice to get on underneath it and just push out the inner brim just so you know that whenever you have your head on, the netting still covers everything. So there we go, that's pretty much it. It extends about that far. Now we can affix this using some shoe glue, sew it in, and then we'll start applying the jute. So yeah, when you're going to be applying the shoe glue and the, uh, the threading itself, try and keep it either towards the bottom or the top, because if you just start threading through all of it, it might be a little bit harder to pull the netting up and get the jute through whenever you start doing that. So I like to either keep it towards the top and then maybe do a little bit towards the bottom as well. But yeah, you wanna get this net in place pretty well because this is going to get tugged a lot. If you're going through a lot of thick brush, it's going to get pulled. So make sure this is secured pretty well. Okay, so that's pretty much done. We got some shoe glue again, just to hold it in place on the bottom. And then we stitched it all throughout. So yeah, looking pretty good there. Next step is to put on some of the jute. Now the jute is going to be based off of, you know, what sort of environment you're going to be using. If you don't want to put too much, that's totally fine. You can replace it with other things. Again, you have other materials like this might fit a little bit better if you have a lot of leaves. But again, I'm in the Pacific Northwest right now. So we have a lot of pine needles and whatnot. So I'm going to definitely put on some jutes. Now the color definitely doesn't match too well, but we're going to be doing this anyway, just so I can show you guys how to actually apply the jute and everything. So again, you wanna sort of get it, you have it in like chunks like this, you wanna sort of get it to about this length, maybe even a little bit longer, and you just wanna start separating it into piles so it's not clumping up too much. So we have a lot right here. Again, try and separate it so you have it like that. That'll make it way easier for when you're actually trying to put it on because if you have a jumble like this, it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt and you're gonna have uneven lengths. So we have this right now. So what you wanna do is get a little bit. So I'm gonna separate this here and just get maybe this much. This is kind of a lot, but I just wanna show you guys. So get about this much. And what you're going to do is find about the midway point. So these aren't necessarily all going to be the same length because these are just, this is an old pile. So uh, it's not cut exactly the same. And then you just wanna find where you wanna put it. So I wanna start covering up the top right now. So what I'm going to do is find some of that netting. So you can see it right here. I'm finding some of the netting and I'm pushing that midpoint through the gap in the netting and I wanna make sure I can get a loop. So right now we have this. So we have the netting here, then we have the jute. And then what you want to do is just pull the other side of the jute through that loop. And then pull it like that, and there you go. There, it just rests like that. And you can you know, try and spread it out. Uh, again, this was a lot, so you don't generally wanna put so much in one area but just showing you guys what it's going to look like. So yeah, that's pretty much it right there. We're going to space this out as much as possible. I don't have a whole lot of jute right now. So we're gonna space it out and then maybe use something else to sort of bulk it up. And when you're actually applying the jute, you wanna try and get it. So whenever you pull it taut and make that knot, it can all sort of bow out a little bit. You can start making a little bit layers if you want. You can apply other pieces of camouflage right now so you can add some layers, but yeah, I like to go from the middle generally outward just so I'm getting the top covered for the most part. And when you're doing this, always be cognizant or aware of where the front of the boonie cap is so you're not uh, draping so much in front. So right now the front is over here. So doing pretty good with not having a whole lot that would impede my vision so much. So I like to also, it's also nice to you know, pick it up every now and again, shake it around, see where there's some obvious gaps because when everything settles, that's where you need to add a little bit more. You can see where the gaps are. It's also nice to get like a little bit of a tail because it's nice to cover up a little bit more of the back since you don't really need to worry too much about the back since it's not really going to get snagged as much. And it's also, you're not worried about that obscuring your vision or anything. And also the back of the neck is hardest to, to camouflage. 
It's always nice to have a buddy to help you out with that, but if you can't get it and you don't cover everything on the back of your neck with your, your you know, camo stick, you can have a little bit more shading and a little more camouflage for the back of your neck. Okay, and that's pretty much what we have so far. You can see a lot of coverage. We have a little bit of uh, some gaps here, which is not too bad. Again, you don't want to cover up the face too much. And then let's see if we can apply some of this stuff. So I've not used this, but I'm sure you could use very similar techniques, like as far as, you know, just cutting up relative strips and then making a loop, pulling it through and whatnot. So let's cut this up a bit and see what we can do. Okay, so let's see. We found a little gap right here. So if we just pull this strip through, we can make a little bit of a loop so we can start pushing the rest of the material through. So there's that. Okay, let's grab all this. And there you go, you can start adding some material like that. Again, that's not too much as far as getting in the way, but it's a little bit overhanging, so I'm gonna cut it a bit. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more of that just so it blends in a little bit more. Okay, so yeah, this is looking very reminiscent of like, if you see a bunch of, you know, like needles or pine needles on the floor, and then you have a bunch of leaves with that, this is looking pretty reminiscent of that, so pretty good. And now again, you can see the brim a little bit. Even if we have some of this overhang, you can see the brim a little bit kind of stands out. So now pretty much the last step, as, I mean, the last step as far as I do, again, you can add some of this um, if you want. You don't want too many different patterns. It's nice to mix up patterns every now and again to, to break up the, you know, the, the scheme of it and kind of make it look like a bunch of mixed things or layer it a bit. So you wanna add some different camouflage patterns or colors, but you don't wanna to do too much, especially changing up the textures too much. So this looks pretty close to what we have here. So we're just gonna take some of these strips and use that to mask some of the brim. And then also, also create some overhang. And that will create a little bit of shade on us and create a little bit of shadow. So if we do have any you know, skin that's not covered up. It's not going to be reflecting as much light just because there's a little more shadow over it. And at the same time, it, again, it creates layers. So if you have layers hanging here and then you have your face behind it, it'll make it a little bit harder so it's not just one flat plane. So yeah, we're gonna be adding that. So again, we're gonna be doing our shugu, cutting this up into strips, gluing it onto the brim, creating some overhang, try and get it in like, you know, awkward shapes like leaves almost. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll sew it on, secure it, and that's pretty much going to be the end of this boonie hat over here. All right, y'all, so here we have it. So again, I just cut up just random like shapes and strips, almost kind of just like jagged so I can have it almost look like leaves. So I just cut up random strips, I glued it with the shoe goo, and then I sewed all that in. So you can see it goes all the way around the I mean, since it goes over the, the brim itself, it does break up the shape and you can't really see the brim nearly as much. Um, we do have some shugu there, but again, once you start using this, the shugu sort of, sort of gets like all this dirt embedded into it, so it's not as reflective. Uh, I'm not really sure how this looks under night vision. I might have to try that whenever I do get some night vision, if you guys are interested in that. But yeah, you can see it breaks up the shape of the brim a lot more. And then since we have this overhang like this, it will also provide a little bit of shadow and just provide some layers so the skin isn't as reflective and whatnot. So that's basically it. We'll do a little side by side with my other one here. So again, this one's been used a little bit more, but I think I'm, I, this definitely helps getting like the multicam um, or the, the pre-camouflaged uh, like material there as opposed to this burlap. Uh, this does have a little bit of dirt embedded into it now, but again, it is one color, so it doesn't work as well. So that's that's the old one. I think I did also put a little bit too much jute and I didn't break it up with any other material, but it did work very, very well. Got a little bit of overhang in certain areas, especially right there. And then this one, we also have that overhang, just uh, not so much in the front. But you can see a little side by side here. This one's going to seem a little bit darker just because I use different materials and whatnot. But yeah, you can see here, you can use these for different environments. This one has a little bit more coming off to the side. This is a little bit rounded, it looks, just because you don't have these other materials like this, you know, sort of going out and breaking out the shape as much. So I think this one works a little bit better 
we can see the inside there again you can see the paneling and then on the inside of here you also have that paneling there so yeah that's pretty much it that's pretty much the end of this video so i'll throw this sucker on you need to find out where the front is so i'll throw this sucker on just so you guys can sort of see what it looks like i would get one like a boonie cap that doesn't necessarily rest on your head but can actually go around it and droop a little bit so again i didn't put so much here so i could actually still see but i do have some overhanging so it covers up a little bit of the back and the sides and you just want to get this pretty much nice and low like that so that's pretty much it again you would wear this in conjunction with something like now you would wear this in conjunction with something called like a viper top or a ghillie top or a viper hood whatever and that's basically this right here so you would just throw this on it's got like straps so you can throw it on over your actual camouflage or over your body armor and whatnot so relatively loose it's got mesh material right here so it's not as hot and then we also have the netting and the jute here so you can apply natural cam camouflage and all that good stuff and yeah you would just throw this on over your back it would cover up a lot of your sleeves so it's pretty much like chest up is where you have all that camouflage which is pretty much where people recognize the, that silhouette so you want to try and use these in conjunction to break up your silhouette so yeah you can see i used the marpad here as opposed to the multicam so i might do a video where i'm making another one of these so if you guys are interested in me doing you know a tutorial for this i can do that but yeah this one is a little bit more simple you just cut it up get that material there apply the netting put on the jute and then you just got to get these these straps here so relatively simple but again once you do those in conjunction with each other it does a great job of breaking up your silhouette so but yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys so let me know what you guys think i mean if there's anything that you might do to sort of improve it again i would recommend just taking this outside dragging it through the dirt and the mud a little bit just to get it you know weathered a bit uh, and less reflective but if there's anything that you guys think could make it a little bit better put that down in the comment section let me know if there's things that you would take out from this let me know as well if there's some things that you really liked uh yeah throw that down in the comment section if you guys like these tutorial videos let me know as well so i can try and do more things like this again i can do the whole you know viper top or whatever you want to call it i can do that as well if you guys want me to but yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of camouflage. I'm a huge fan of doing like recce stuff. So it's always fun doing stuff like this. Uh, definitely a little bit longer of a video. I can definitely understand that, but it does take time to do something like this. So yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think regardless. This was a lot of fun to do. It's always fun to sort of hone those, those skills again. And it's always fun breaking out the shugu and the jute to do stuff like this. But a lot of the stuff I learned was taught to me by you know snipers or other recce guys. And that's stuff that they learned at the schoolhouse at sniper school and whatnot so yeah let me know what you guys think regardless a lot of fun to do thank you for watching if you guys watch to the end you guys are awesome so thank you for that i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you think that's it for this video i'll see y'all in the next one